Yeah. Um, I'm Ryan Liu. So I uh, thanks a lot for joining me. Um, and I'll be talking about uh, transforming stress process. Basically, I gave the subtitle the journey, the, the journey from joining a transformation to transforming yourself. Bit high set perhaps. Um, what I basically want to talk about is Scrum Masters in organizations that are moving towards this agility uh, and usually also are starting their own career as a Scrum Master. So you have a company that doesn't yet know what it's doing and people who also do not yet know what they're supposed to do because they're new in the job. Um, I'll set my own timer here because I get panicky if I don't get the time feedback after five minutes. Um, okay, so big thanks to the sponsors for allowing the organization to organize this. I've had a lot of, I've heard a lot of good talks, I hope to add something to that. Um, yeah, and I'll move right into it. Um, I use Scrum in the title, and again I, I, I talk about Scrum. Um, that's because that's where I'm from. Uh, and I'll introduce myself in the next slide a little bit better. Um, I do believe, however, that this can also be applied to companies working in Kanban or whatever companies want to, uh, want to use. It's just that this is the language I'm familiar with, so I'll stick with the Scrum language. Um, and a really interesting thing happens when, when people are talking about why are we using Scrum, then they, they, they tend to point at the benefits. And this is the benefits that the Scrum Alliance says Scrum has. So they say, okay, these teams are continuously working on the most important stuff. They're continuously pulling out, uh, bring, bring that stuff to the market so you get a lot of value fast. And it helps to innovate fast and move from idea to delivery more quickly, drive higher customer satisfaction and increase employee morale. Which sounds absolutely brilliant. But when I then come into a company that is starting to use Scrum, that looks more like this. It's like a demo. There is a path there. No one sees where it's going to. Uh, it's dark there, jungles I associate with spiders and snakes and <coughs> stuff like that, so it's not exactly safe. Um, and that was for me also. I started, um, so the first time I got into contact with um, uh, with Scrum was, uh, was in the Netherlands. I worked for IT, a big bank. I started off as a tester in a waterfall setting and all of a sudden the bank said, you know what, we're going to be HR. It was about six, seven years ago. All of a sudden, everyone was supposed to be agile. So I got into a team. Um, we worked with ATMs, and pretty soon my Scrum Master asked if he could do technical stuff again. And I asked, OK, can I get your job then? Can we switch? And I was about to do that. Um, I had a lot of fun. Uh, now that I look back, I probably was a bad Scrum Master. I had a lot to learn and I didn't know that I had a lot to learn yet. Um, and what I saw was an organization that did not really match that what was taught me in the training. And then uh, after a couple of years, um, me and my wife decided to move to Austria. I'm married to an Austrian woman, so there was a reason to do that. We moved to Austria. Um, and there I got into a company, uh, they called OccuPay, nowadays called Empirix, that does agile coaching and training. So basically, the, um, well, you know what we do, I think, by the description. So I get to see a lot of teams, mostly teams that work in companies that have started wor working agile in the last year, mostly with Scrum Masters that had a different role before that. So generally what I see is Scrum Masters do not get onboarded at that moment, so they don't hire experienced Scrum Masters from the outside. Instead, they promote or demote, however you want to call it, project managers or developers or whoever they can find that will take the role into the role of Scrum Master. Um, and that's why I got the inspiration from the, for the talk. I'll give three tips. Uh, two of those are based on the works of Les Stroud. For those of you not, who do not know him, um, he, was a, he is a survival expert, as far as I know he's still alive. Um, and back when I was a, uh, in school, he had a show on Discovery Channel that I like to watch, 
where he sent himself into impossible situations all alone. So he went to Alaska in the middle of the winter, he went to a tropical island where there was nothing there, and all he took was cameras. I had a lot of fun watching that and preparing this session. I thought a lot about what he did there. Um, because there were two things that he always did. He said, okay, before you do anything, slow down, stop, watch, and then maybe move. But always watch first. So I'll just repeat that here. Um, and the second thing that he said is, uh, no matter what the problem is, you probably have something with you that, you that can help you. The only thing is you probably need to be creative. So it's the second hint that I'll, um, that I'll drop somewhere along the line. Um, and there's a third, hint, a third hint that he couldn't take, and that's to find a buddy. He was all alone. You guys probably aren't. Um, so, first hint. Observe before you act. Um, in the preparation, I went to an Austrian um, job market uh, website. I typed in Scrum Master, and then I did something that probably is not very nice to the companies that search for Scrum Masters. I just went through them and I collected all the sentences where I thought, wait a minute, is this really Scrum Master? Now, I'm not saying that those companies have a horrible picture of Scrum Master. They might have, them, but they might not have. I know, I know most of the companies. Um, what I'm saying is, is that these are wait a minute sentences. I collected them, I translated them to English. Uh, the original is in German. And you get stuff like making sure the sprints are concluded within the given time frame, within budget, and with, with the plant quality. Okay, interesting, cool. Um, work closely together with the product owner management to make sure team collaboration is good and goals and product scope are reached. It's, it all sounds sort of okay, but suddenly they're combining goals and product scope and uh, not sure. Um, you make sure that the product backlog is well organized and prioritized. I always thought that there was another role for that, but yeah. <laughs> here we can do that too. Um, you make sure that, that the project continuously delivers in high quality. Again, I thought we had another role for that, but cool. Um, then um, you are responsible for efficiency improvement and continuous improvement of performance, which is sort of true, but sort of dangerous too. Um, this is my absolute favorite. Uh, you're responsible for budget controlling. You're, uh, you're the one that reports to customers when you're talking about environment and risk analysis. I'm not even sure what that means. I'm pretty sure that I don't want to do that. Um, or you plan resources and report performance progress. Utah this morning said to not use the word resources in this context. Those are not my words. Because I think here they actually use the word. Okay. Um, now you might think, why is this a bad thing? Why, why is the bad thing that these guys are looking for Scrum Masters that also have to do this? Because Scrum Masters want to help, right? I mean, that's, if you're a Scrum Master, you want to help. That's support is supposed to go with the job. Um, and I'd like to show a video um, that I think quite a few of you already know. And I would like you to do what's taught in the video anyway. Just, just go along with video, even if you don't. Um, it's a video of selective attention. So for those of you who saw the video for the first time, this is the actual speed that they showed the gorilla, if you missed it. Uh, so it was in... Um... Now, there are a couple of people in this room that have seen the video already. So no, at least one. C could you raise your hand real quick? So, um, what were the letters on the wall? Uh, Where were they? How many passes did the black team make? Oh, come on. 
what's the what's what's the literal for? Yes. This is I mean this is what happens if a scrum master gets a job that is not technically his or hers. You get a focus, and by that focus, you get the danger, at the very least, of ha being selectively uh, uh, of having selective attention. And you might miss the gorilla. Um, and I don't know what the gorilla is in your particular team. I'm fairly sure that you have a couple of them. Probably one of them is standing right there in the middle. Uh, and you want to be able to see that. And that's what Bestrad also also always said: stop moving immediately and just observe what's there. Um, and I think the, the real danger in that uh, in those things that they ask the scrum master to do is not that it's completely wrong or or doesn't fit the role to do that. It's just that you might get distracted from the things that you're supposed to be doing. So what can, what can we do? Um, now nothing here is new. Nothing here is rocket science. Uh, first thing, always ask the team. So if there's Anything you need to do um, that the organization asks you to do, they're probably saying giving a hard no is not the smartest thing if you want to keep having a career. There's only a limited amount of no, uh, options where you can say, no, I'm never going to do that. And then at some point they say, fine, then you are never going to work here. Um, so always ask the team, is there anyone else who is better equipped to do this? Um, and if you have to do it, but it's the job of someone else, like we saw in a couple of those things, I would say the product owner is more responsible for that than a Scrum Master should be. Bring that particular team member. Um, I, uh, I'm currently working uh, with a construction company, the software development there, um, and um, the Scrum Masters get a lot of additional tasks, and all I say is, okay, if you know who should do that task, just bring that person in too. Do it together. Feels a bit silly because they've asked you, but maybe at some point they start to notice, hey, this other person has the actual information, knows what he's talking about. The scrum master is only passing it through. Because you do not want to be that window that you sometimes see on television with the Chinese restaurants, where the food comes through. That window has no function in itself. Um, and then there's, there's two things that I like to do. So the first thing I like to do when I, when I go to the team, build your own scrum master. Not sure if any one of you has ever done that activity. Um, if you Google that, then you can see how it's done. Basically, what you what you ask the team is what kind of scrum master would you like to have as a team? So where, what do you want me to do? Um, because then you can have a discussion about yeah, that's something that I actually want to do and I'm willing to do for you, or, or no, that's not something I do for you. So if they say okay. Uh, we want you to plan our one-on-ones, one-on-ones, even if it's not with, with you. So you are the one that gets the honor of putting uh, calendar appointments for others in their calendars. I would say no. Maybe? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm sorry, you can do that. I'm willing to teach those that can't, um, but that's not what I'm for. And there's other stuff that they ask and they say, okay, I've never done that before, but yeah, that makes sense, I'll do that for you. Um, and you can take it one step further, you can also do that with yourself. So if you, if you go to a, um, to a job interview for a Scrum Master, it makes sense before you go to the job interview to have an idea of how you would like to do the job based on the description that you get. I'm currently in the middle of job interviewing, uh, I try to do that. So I try to see, okay, what is it that they ask of me? What is my reaction to that? And move into the conversation with that preparation. And then in the conversation, maybe come across things where I say, hey, that's cool. Uh, I totally want to do that. Or, yeah, you're emphasizing all the points that actually I didn't find all that valuable. I don't want to do this. Thanks for your time, but this is not my time. Um, so really think about, okay, where do I, what do I want to do and what do I not want to do? And maybe be upfront and say, look, uh, this um, um, budget controlling, find someone else. I'll take the Scrum Master job if you cut that out. Um, again, this is hard for people that are in a job and like their job and don't want to lose their job to say no. Um, but I think as a Scrum Master, you have to, you have to 
to, to show a bit of uh, courage. Because if you don't show courage, how is your team going to feel allowed to show courage? Um, so that's about observing before you act. It's really about thinking, okay, is this my job? Is this someone else's job? If it's not your job, take that person with you and maybe have a conversation about what is my job. Um, and then there's the thing about um, bodying up, so finding someone else. Uh, I worked at IT, which is the biggest IT employer in the Netherlands. So there were a lot of people, a lot of other scrum masters. And nevertheless, I felt fairly alone. Because I was pretty sure that all the other scrum masters had a better idea of what they were doing, and all my questions were stupid, and yeah, 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 yeah. So I talked myself into the position now. Um, maybe I can learn from them, but why would they be bothered with spending time with me? Um, and I find that a lot with other scrum masters too, that there are things that you can do. Um, but then you get a second problem. Um, I thought really long about using someone else's calendar, so like in picture I didn't do that, I created this for myself, but this is a typical scrum master calendar. Um, and I mean, the resolution is, isn't brilliant, but there, there, there are actually different buildings in there. So you have to be in one meeting, and, and that was nice, I didn't overlap anything. Because typically, scrum masters have overlapping meetings too. Uh, they have to talk to marketing for some reason. They have to be in this building, and then do a retro in that building, and then go back to their pro uh, uh, project manager show fix, because they're now a scrum master, but their manager wants them to sit on, the, on their old meetings too. Um, and just a simple question. There's a, there's a lot of stuff that you can learn from conferences. There's a lot of stuff that you can learn from meetups. I'm not sure how the Sarajevo meetups um, see this, but I, what I've gathered, so also fairly active. Why are you going to fit those? Because they also want some, some time for themselves, maybe, for their children, for their sports, for whatever. Why are you going to fit those in this, in this schedule? Um, and actually, most scrum masters that I work with do not want to go on the meetup if that meetup starts at 6. Because they say, either I'm still in the office, and I ask them, when did you start? 8. Okay, that's not healthy. Or, I want to be home. I want to take a bath, or let, lie down, or whatever. I don't want to go to, to the other side of the city to, to do this meetup. I don't have the energy to do that. And that's, that's actually, I find that really, really, really a shame because they're missing out on so much. And then when we, got, when we get to con conferences, I mean, for this particular one, I don't think I am working as a valid excuse, because most of us don't work on Saturdays, but it costs money to come here. Um, and I've seen many scrum masters fighting over conferences that cost in the order of uh, 100 euros, so that's 200 local yeah. uh, currency. Um, with the managers, and they did not get allowance to go there because it was too expensive. There's a couple of guys sitting in the office actually doing nothing for more than that uh, each day. They could not go to conferences because those were too, were too expensive. And we're talking about conferences that cost very little compared to, I don't know, the Scrum gathering is in a couple of, uh, in about 10 days in uh, Vienna, they pay couple of thousand. I'm not talking about those ones. I'm talking about the smaller ones like this one, where you can learn a lot from people who are probably struggling with the exact same things, and, you, um, and you're just not allowed to go, even if you can find the end. So, what can we do there? Um, again, nothing new. Community of Practice Scrum Master. Does everyone know what it is? Is there anyone who doesn't know what it is? Because that will be the easiest one, okay. You just find Scrum Masters, best thing is in your context. So if you're working on a product, find Scrum Masters that have teams and similar products. Um, and you sit together and you learn from each other. You, you try to find common, common problems and provide common solutions. Maybe even find common rules that you can offer to the team. Is there a, this a rule that we want to do? Uh, Scrum Master Dojo, it's a bit of the same, but there it goes. Uh, there it's actually about practicing. So they actively <coughs> practice something, be it a coaching technique for those that do not actually have a large coaching um, 
education, you can do, do there are various easy coaching ways where you can just practice a little bit of coaching or maybe practice a little bit of uh, uh, drawing, we'll get to that later anyway, or maybe practice whatever, practice together and then give each other feedback how you did it. Um, and the last one is, is a thing that I'm, I'm a big fan for. Um, where I work as a coach, uh, I generally work at a customer alone. So there's not a colleague of mine at the customer. Um, my other colleagues have the same issue, and then every Friday we get together, and there we um, we have intervisions, which is basically those of you who know supervision, where someone who is an expert tries to help you through a problem. Intervision is the same with, but with peers. Um, so you've got peers, people who know about the same stuff, and. Um, Together you try to solve, uh, to offer a solution to a problem where, some, where one of your colleagues is stuck. I actually uh, I absolutely love that. Uh, that's one of the things that I'll take to my new job. Um, so anyone wants to hire me here in this room, this is what you get at the very least. Um, probably a bomb market here. Um, this is just one way to do it. Uh, this is the easiest one because it takes half an hour uh, and needs not a lot of... This you can also do with people who do not have the Scrum Master role. Here you just need to find a, find a couple of like-minded individuals who, who have jobs that are not too far apart. But including product owners here is perfectly fine. Including team managers might probably also work. Um, so if you want to try this, uh, I, I recommend that. Um, I'll have my contact uh, data in a later slide, so if you have questions, just ask, and I'm happy to provide answers as good as I can. Um, and then sometimes you just need someone to talk to. Uh, when I get home, I do that to my wife. Um, and it works fairly well. I mean, I'd like to think that we have a good marriage. Uh, the thing is, at some point, she says, OK, you just used the third three letter abbreviation in one sentence. I am completely lost. I do not know what you say. You might as well be talking Greek to me. Um, I'm not sure how that is for you. Maybe you have a partner that is sort of can sort of understand you and then do more than uh-huh, uh-huh, okay, cool, uh-huh. Um, I don't. I mean, I love her and I can, I can offload a lot of interpersonal stuff, so if I get into a fight with someone that she can relate to, but as soon as it's anywhere near my expertise, she loses me. But I lose her, actually, within seconds. Um, and that's why I find it very important to have someone like that in your job. Now, um, you all got one of these, and I would highly recommend to, to grab that and to think of one person that you can talk to on a regular basis. You, coffee is good enough. Just have a regular coffee. Just once a week have a coffee and talk to that person. Maybe you already do that. And if it's about football for half the coffee, that's fully okay. But then at the very least you have this one person that you can just say, okay, I do not get why we have to do this expense thing that we saw this morning. Every single time I travel to the other office, I'm not going to a customer. All I'm doing is getting a train to go to the other office. Why? Uh, just to offload. Um, if you have posted, that's even better because then you can pick it on your laptop or whatever and then uh, on Monday you see that and you can immediately ask that person. Find someone to talk to. I didn't do that at the in the first couple of months and then at some point I happened to start talking to a scrum master and I noticed that he had exactly the same problems as I had. Just find someone. Um, and write the name down. Ask them on Monday, hey, would you be open to having a regular coffee? Add some of the sweets that we saw upstairs if they need bribing. They probably don't. Coffee is, coffee is not bribing. Um, so that's about not being alone. And that's the, then there's this thing about being creative. Um, I mean, for last trial it was, I'm thirsty and I have a rock, a piece of plastic and a tin. Apparently that's enough to solve the problem of being thirsty. Oh, and a chocolate bar, sorry. 
otherwise it won't work. Um, for us, it's a little bit different. Uh, but there's a reason that uh, if you go to agile conferences, you see stuff like uh, adult people playing with Legos. Um, I'd love to do that, but I'm not qualified to do that in any way. I can do the kids stuff, but not uh, adult stuff. Um, I know someone for next year, should you be interested? Um, or I absolutely love this book, it's by Paul Goddard, uh, Improving Agile Teams. He uses improvisational theater to play with his teams. So he, for instance, he says, okay, we're going to have a daily scrum, but you're not uh, allowed to use actual words. So you can talk, you may make sounds, but not actual. He does that in order for his teams to get into different levels of cooperation. I absolutely love those two. I've, um, I've actually picked something else. Um, there's a couple of reasons why you want this creativity. Uh, this morning, uh, morning uh, my life, I think she was called, showed us these rooms they have. I don't know if you noticed, but on one of them there was a dark spot. And I've seen the best problem solving happen, happening around the dark spot. There was someone at the computer checking every now and then if it was feasible, but the actual problem solving happened at the dark spot. It's so very important to have a creative setting to solve things. But if, if you need an additional reason, use this one. It's just important to have fun. And I think, as a Scrum Master, you are responsible for your teams having fun while doing it. If no one else is doing, no one else is creating an environment, try to create a little bit of that. Um, I use drawing. It's the easiest thing. Uh, I wouldn't say that I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an expert drawer, but I get by. Um, so these are things that I use on standard retrospectives. You probably know the retrospectives, the what went well, what didn't go well, what are my new ideas for um, uh, for solving something, and uh, who do I like to give a compliment. Very important, just, just toss in something nice. Um, or what makes me uh, mad, sorry, mad, what makes me sad and what makes me glad? So when am I angry about something? When am I? Uh, those are very simple retrospective techniques, and you can actually write the words mad, sad, glad. They work almost as well. But I've found that just having a couple of drawings on the, on the flip chart, and maybe doing that live, and maybe even making a small mistake and then saying, okay, now I need to change my drawing a little bit. That's okay. We can, we're allowed to make mistakes, opens the uh, environment retrospective to be more creative. Um, and it's, it's small stuff. Um, and I brought another example. And maybe for those of you who want to try, uh, we've got plenty of time. Um, I'll give you guys a little bit, I'll give you a bit of time to draw symbols for it. Um, a future job, what is it? I need to do that first. It's a very popular coaching technique. Again, um, I'm probably not well qualified to talk about coaching techniques. I'll do that anyway. Um, where you set the team in the future. So you ask them to, to move themselves into the future where the problem that they have is already solved. So you allow them to look around themselves and say, OK, hey, the problem is already solved. And then from this, from this state that, that is so much better, they look back and try to figure out what are the steps that got us here. So they really try to stay in the solution domain instead of in the problem domain. Um, you can also use this in retrospectives or maybe in other meetings. Um, and I'll just give you a challenge uh, for about two minutes. Just try to draw these. The words problem, future, and next steps, because that's what we want to have. What is your problem? What is the... Uh, um, how does the future look like and what are the next steps? I'd like to advise you to just try. I already tried. I'll show mine. You do not have to show yours. So I'll be the only one be, uh, to be embarrassed. Um, if you want to show them, of course, feel free. And I'm fully aware that these are not easy words to to draw. I could have given you a house. Anyone can draw a house. These are these are rather abstract words, um, but I'm pretty sure that every single one of you can draw a problem. 
Yeah. Should be done. Yeah. There's no right, there's no wrong. So are you happy with the results? Good here. Next one, half a minute. Okay. The thing I did here is I tried to find a technique, a retrospective technique, where there weren't um, pictures available at plansforretrospective.org, which is my standard go-to. Uh, and most of the easy ones were already taken. Someone had already drawn way better than I can. So I just picked one that is not actually uh, part of that because it's hard to fit it into a classic retrospective. Uh, and this was my first attempt. Uh, so I draw a broken something. I was I was actually trying to draw a broken window and then I got stuck about into the first line and I thought, okay, it's a broken something. Uh, for the future, I said, okay, let's use a UFO. Um, and for next steps, I figured steps will do. And then I tried to see what Google thought was correcter. Because obviously Google knows more about drawing than I do. Um, Google says, nah, a problem is more something like this, or maybe a uh, thundercloud. Um, and the future is something like this. So it's just a clock with an arrow around it, then you're finished. And next steps, they tend to say you, you need to use a stair step. Does any one of you have anything that's different from that? Cool. Cool. Because it's not wrong to use something different. I'd say that my future is way nicer than that one. Personal opinion. But um, the, the, the thing is, just having these things on a, on a flip chart or on your presentation just enlightens the mood a little bit. Um, so. If you want to show your drones, you probably want to learn before you do that. As to not have too many people laughing at you. Um, I absolutely love this book for flip chart drawing. The problem is that it's in German and only in German. No one bothered to translate it. Um, and then I tried to look at the other favorite flip chart books that I have, and they are also only in German. For some reason, I do not have favorite flip chart books that are not in German. Um, so I can recommend this one by um, Sauer. Uh, there's a better visible one in the in the back. Um, but if you don't speak German, then I thought, what's the next best thing? And I went to sketch noting because that's something where you can also practice. You can just listen to tech talks and you sketch noting. They also provide a lot of ideas how you can draw. I don't know progress, lovely work to draw or success. They just provide you ideas. Using the word sketch note in Google is almost as good. Um, then if you want to be a bit more exotic or have a bit more fun, um, I really like this particular um, course uh, in uh, Udemy, how to draw a kitten, it's exactly that. So that's all you learn, how to draw a kitten. But it's cutesy, it's cartoony, it's fun, it's easy. I also do other drawing courses on there, it does are way, way harder, but uh, this one is actually easy. Or if you want to have fun, and I've never trusted to put my work on there, there's a thing called Animal Alphabets, where every week they present an animal and they ask people to send in their drawings on Twitter. Um, I always do that and I still hide my progress because I'm a bit ashamed of that. So maybe I need to build up a bit, bit more courage. Um, and maybe you want to do something like this. You can do this on the paper. I tend to do that with my kids. Um, I just give them a piece of paper and say, okay, draw me a random, random figure. And then I make that figure into something. That's, that's my job. So we also did of wood. So I had my oldest son carve out pieces of wood for me. And then I had to make something of that. 
And the cool thing is, with kids, they're not nice. Kids are actually brutal. So, he gave me this piece of wood, and I said, that's a bird. And he took it from me and said, no, that's wrong. You're doing it wrong. Actually, it's a dinosaur. Um, again, there's no, there's no right, there's no wrong. I tend, to, I tend to do this sort of things when I'm stuck writing something or preparing something. And I just go downstairs, find whatever kid is available, <laughs> I've got two, give them a piece of paper and just let, let them do these things so that I can open up. Um, it's also fun. Uh, that was just about everything I wanted to tell you. Um, so, again, uh, as a Scrum Master, you're responsible for your team. You're probably learning a lot of things, make that visible and make mistakes visible. Um, I actually noticed, we sent in the, uh, um, the presentations a couple of days early, and I tend to be one of those guys that changes the pre presentation up until the very last minute, which is now. Um, and um, there's a mistake on there. The title is the wrong one. Sorry, I made a mistake. But do that to your team as a Scrum Master. Make mistake, mistakes visible. Ask them for feedback. If you're, if you're doing something, hey, was it helpful? Or those drawings, do they distract you? I wouldn't ask them, do they help you? Because then they say no and they stop. Uh, because at first they don't see the value that. Um, maybe even tell them up front, hey, I'm, I'm trying something new here today. I want to try this technique. I've never done it before, but we, we'd like to do it. And just maybe as an as a, as a idea for you guys, when will you try something new? Right now we're in a setting where you can think of new ideas. You probably heard a hundred ideas that are way better than the ones I just gave you. But there is something that you want to try out. Use the time until five, when we close, or six, to figure out when am I going to try it and write that down. <laughs> okay, that was it. Um, there's a couple of people that made it possible that did not know that they made it possible. Uh, I'll put this, the slides on slides here, so if there's any photo that you want to reuse or any book title that you couldn't read, it's in there. Um, that's me. Uh, the empirics part for the next month or so, and then, I'll, then the email won't work anymore. <laughs> um, and those are the people that actually paid a lot for a lot of the stuff here. Oh. Thanks for your time. Um, according to schedule, the next speaker is on right now, and I don't want to disturb her, I think. If I remember correctly. Anna, okay, that's a her. But if there, if there are questions, I'm here until tomorrow morning. Come to me, of course. Yeah.